Howie Mandel, seal or no seal. Take your time. Think about what this would mean to you and your family. Seal or no seal. <laughs> No seal! Let's move on. You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. Do you want headphones or no? Oh, Would, you got you them want, on already. Yeah. I didn't even realize you had You them said on. I had black plastic ears? <laughs> like Mickey Mouse. You're like the new Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Do you want me not to wear them? No, no. Wear oh. them. I just oh. didn't know whether... You're, Most people, I don't know, do you play things? Yeah. Okay, so then I would need them, right? Yeah, we're going to play something that's really cr crucial, important to this episode. Then yes, I would like headphones. You another, would. One more pair. You want another pair? Well, I, as many as I can get. God damn it. It's all right, let's go with these. I only have two. Let's go with these. Okay. Uh, Howie Mandel, welcome to the Harland Highway Podcast. Do you want me to hit the theme music while I'm introducing you, or do it solo, Howie Mandel? While you're introducing me. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Harlan Highway. No, no do it solo, oh, like without, oh, the, without, without, like, it. without the music. Go ahead. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's dry. That's, Does that, it need something? I think it needs. <laughs> I, I'm being honest. I mean, I just I didn't know until I heard it. Do it with the music. The th theme music. I think so. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Harlan. No, I can see throws, you're not. It throws me. I just yeah. think it's clear. And and you know what? It, you can do it in post, like after you can make it. Yeah. Because I saw you I saw you sort of grimace. I did a little. What if I do this? You've got the cans on. What if I lower it like three are you are you familiar with decibels? You know what? Start with more because you can always pull it back, but you can't add. Right? Is right. it easy? Or maybe it is. That's the first rule of decibels. You can always pull it more, but you can't have it back. I don't know. That's Newton's. Is, deucible, is, is a decibel a sound measurement? It's a, it, but it's metric. So decibel is from the metric system. It just used to be called uh, level, but now it's decibel if you're doing. That's from the Latin 10. Yeah. It is. So why don't we try it again? I'll move it a decibel. And then eventually we'll start the show, but let's right. see what happened. Whoa! Whoa, shit, whoa. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. Is that a joke? Do, do I, you just got decibeled, player. Oh, okay. Player so got decibel. Okay. Back a little bit. Hold on. Hold on. God. Whoa. Slory. Peter Lorry. Hang on. Okay. I'm going to lower the decibels. I think that feels good. What do you think? My, it's really well, loud in my in my headset. How's that? How's that? Is that, is that yeah, better? Man, I'm not. I'm not getting anything. Wait. Are you? Is the music playing now? How about this? Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I got. I hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Harland Highway for the fifteenth time, which is a record. Congratulations with Howie Mandel. Hi, Howie. Hi, Harlan. How are hi, you? Hi, hi. That's called a fade. Oh, okay. It's called a fade. Which is a haircut. It's a type of a haircut, right? Isn't that like if you go in, I don't oh. know because I don't do haircuts, yeah, but you, you can get it. a fade. Is that what Rachel had on Friends? That's a sunset, which is also a type of say, fade. Can That's I just a type say of something? fade. You can. The, the view here, yeah, is yeah. just like the true California view. I mean, the palm trees, yeah, and just a a little bit of overcast. Yeah, it's sort of a cross mix of California Miami Vice. But you know what's amazing with your view? Yeah, is when you look out mm -hmm. onto the Talk sunset. Yeah. You can see your own shadow, yeah. and a lot of and a lot of the yeah. vistas around yeah. the globe you can't. Yeah, but this is what we offer up here. Yeah, look at your shadow. It's like you're like at sunset. 
You're like the Nostradamo. What's the vampire's name? Nostradamus? The Nostrafato? No, no, wasn't that the, the, the first Dracula, the bald guy yeah. you're talking about? Nostral Damien? Nost- I just called him Bald Dracula. Bald Dracula with that long shadow. That's kind of like, at least I know you're not a vampire. You have a shadow. Mm-hmm. We can do shadow puppets in the, uh, I don't want to. I do. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, you're going to do it in the desert. It's a rattlesnake. I knew. I know, but they don't. Them. They're not like us. They don't know stuffs. We, we do. You want to? I, I know you know this one in the desert. So it's not the same. That was not the same. Oh, wasn't that the same one? Is that not? not is that different? This is different. The, the, the rattlesnake was, but this is the other with the. The. I I do know what it is, but no, no, but no, it's I'll also be, a star sign. No, no, no. Can I just say something? Yes, please. I don't want to say what it is because I think that it's good to engage an audience and like why take away the fun from the audience and tell them what it is where they're probably watching and listening and guessing. And if yeah. I if I give them the answer, then I'm taken away. I think today in yeah. today's day and age, in any kind of media, you want engagement. Yeah, so I leave it to the audience. You you figure out what it is. Are you t- talking to me or them? To them. Okay, well, can I... So I shouldn't tell them what... Sh- 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 is? Oh, uh, you want me to tell them? If you, if you want to. Okay, so that was uh, my friend Harlan Williams going... That was if you're just listening because they can. Th- some people listen to this. And oh don't yeah, watch this it. is audio. So as that well. was me doing Harlan, so they don't think it was the same. Right, right, uh, yeah. But y- can you tell them what that actually is, though? Like, oh, the that's creature. Har- it's a creature. We're all creatures. That was Harlan Harlan Williams from Canada, a brilliant comic, going. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why won't you say scorpion? I don't know why you won't say it. Who's a scorpion? Dude. (laughs) How do you know? Come on, guy. Oh, my God. I thought because you gave a hint. I was sure it was a Capricorn. (laughs) Because you said it was like a... It was a star sign. Are you a Scorpio? No, Sagittarius. What are you going to do about it? Power suck. You were on my podcast yeah. and you talked. It is. Um, Power suck. At first I thought it was ridiculous. But it, it really works. Do, it does work. Yeah. And it, once you start, there's no going you can't back. Even, it's, it foams it up in your mouth. Yeah. Um, uh, do you like wine? Then let's, uh, let's talk about Bright Cellars. They started with a simple idea, finding wine that you love and making it not difficult. Wine used to be fun, but somewhere along the line, traditional wine culture made it unnecessarily intimidating and exclusive, which made it difficult for some people to learn what kinds of wines they actually love. Go to Bright Cellars, you take a quiz, they have a little quiz online, and you join nearly 3 million people in taking this quiz, and then you're matched with the wines you're guaranteed to love. After you take the quick seven question quiz, they match you with wines from all over the world curated to your taste palette. Uh, Each box comes with wine education cards for each bottle that outline tasting notes, suggested pairings, best serving temperatures, origins, all that stuff. The stuff that makes wine drinking fun because you're not just drinking a liquid, you're learning as you go. And your satisfaction is guaranteed if you don't like a bottle, they will replace it. Try wine in a whole new way stress-free, fun, delivered to your door, and uh, let's get sipping, gang. Lastly, I want to thank Bright Sellers for giving my followers and subscribers a limited-time offer of $100 off their subscription and a free wine tote. All you do is click the link in the description pasted below, right below the video here, to take the quiz and get started Enjoy your wine, and uh, let's get back to the podcast.
You know what I wanted to start with today, Howie? Yes. By the way, Howie Mandel, TV star, podcast star. Do you want to plug your podcast right out of the gate? Because you know no one's waiting to the end. You're right. They don't. They don't uh, I don't think anybody waited past the introduction. I think they're Yeah, gone. they're probably already gone. So just for us, you were on my podcast. You were great. It's called Howie Mandel Does Stuff. Stop. I do it with my daughter, but you know that. Yeah. There's nobody listening Nobody's or watching. Listening. It's just us. We know. I talk to myself sometimes. Do you talk to yourself? I do. I do too. I sing to myself. I actually still sing in the shower. Really? Yeah, I have a few favorites. I sing When You Wish Upon a Star by Jiminy Cricket. Yeah. And I sing uh, We Are the Champions by Queen. Yeah. Wow. You gave me fame and fortune and everything that goes with it. I thank you all. And in the shower, it sounds good while there's bubbles all over my groin and stuff. Really? It's, it, 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 a lot of people sing in the shower. I do uh, sculpture. No way. In the shower. With what? Butter? No. <laughs> the shower? Well, I don't know what you... you don't take... I uh, just... I, I'm working with bronze now. Wow. Clay. Wow. Bronze. Stone. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't speak much Spanish, but I'm going to throw this at you. El Delicio. Your sculpture. Thank you. El Delicio. Gracias. Guy. Gracias. Uh, I oh, wanted guy. to start today with okay. an aptitude test. Okay. Because I feel like, you know, we want our people, the people listening, whoever's listening. The person. To, and, and I want to try to figure out a bit. You're a complicated guy. You're I complex. Am. I am. Yeah. Go ahead. A lot of layers. Figure me out. Go figure. Here we go. Aptitude test for Howie. You're walking along a dirt road. You find a key on the ground. Okay. You come to three doors. Behind one door is a starving tiger. Okay. Another, a beautiful naked woman. And the other, an elderly priest with four full bottles of Newman's own oil and vinegar salad dressing. Now... There's a red door, a green door, and a black door. Okay. Which door does Howie pick? Well, here's the, the conundrum. I'm colorblind. Are you serial? Yeah. How did you, pu- how did you pull that out of me? Like, people don't know that. A lot of people, I go on a lot of shows, and people don't do their research. But you, buddy. Yeah. I, uh, you could look it up. You could Google it. Uh, there's, been, there's a company that sent me glasses that correct colorblindness. These are not the glasses. But that is a what a what a, a wonderful way to get to a very personal. It's all uh, part of the aptitude test. I am colorblind, and uh, you know I'm okay with it. That's why I'm not allowed to get. I, I went to try to get my pilot's license, and I wasn't allowed to get that. Oh, okay. Well, then let me just do a little on the fly adjustment here. Okay. There's three doors. Okay. A brown door, a brown door, and a brown door. Which, and one has a tiger, one has a beautiful woman, and one has the priest. Okay. I'm a Jew. I'm afraid of animals. Can I have, like, am I, what am I going to do with the naked woman? Do I look at her? Do you touch her? Well, we don't get into that till you've gone through the door. You have to pick the door. We don't know what you've picked. Why wouldn't so I let's pick the naked, we, oh, let's say I pick the brown door with the naked woman. Let's say we we rename them. We do green door door one, red door two, and black uh, two. Two is the two. naked woman. I keep saying the naked. How can I get to tiger? The naked? You just walked into the. No, I you at, I want to go to the naked. Too late. No, you pick two. Look at tiger number two. We said red. Now you're in the door. This is the next part of the aptitude test. Do you know what aptitude means, guy? Is that the second question? <laughs> <laughs> no. You're in Yes, the aptitude means okay. the, the height that you're flying at. Well, right? Yes. Like you're not allowed to release your seatbelt or recline until they reach right? Can't, a certain Can't you can't get Wi-Fi until you get to a certain aptitude. Right. So now you're in the door. You've picked the door with the, the tiger. hungry tiger. Yeah. What does Howie do inside this room? I scream, fuck, I thought this was the naked woman. 
right? I was the wrong door. I said, I'm colorblind. I'm confused. I don't have an aptitude. I was looking for a hungry woman, and I got wild pussy. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Okay, this is part of the test. No, I get it. I feel like yeah. I'm right in the midst of this test. Yeah. Am I doing good on this test? Well, we're not finished yet, guy. I know, I can tell. But you don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Well, with a tiger, I think I stand, you stand very still and make yourself look large. Is that what the, like, or that's bears. That's bears. Uh, There's, well, now you're kind of going into what I was doing Scorpio. earlier. Scorpio. Scorpio, yeah. Because tigers probably... Uh, will stay back from a scorpion. That's true. Right? A scorpion is poisonous, and it's probably a predator. Uh, tigers don't eat scorpion. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing now, but I'm down a... This is the aptitude test. You, you're, you're, this you're, is Harlan's Highway. Yeah. You, you're looking for solutions. You're confused. You're scared. And now our audience has a handle. I have a handle on what I'm working with. Okay. Scared, confused, in need of a naked woman, a Jew, and sort of a mime artist type of deal is where we're at with today's guest. It's uncanny what your the ability you have. Right? It's amazing. Thank you. I'm telling you that I love you as a, a comedian and an actor and a personality, but you have to you have to um if you ever have time, come on America's Got Talent and do what you're doing. Do this. Yeah. Because I think that's something that isn't... Uh, I will. Nobody has recognized you for this. And I'm going to win the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, my God. How yeah. is he able to just, through an aptitude test, like, right? can you imagine doing it to Sophia or Heidi or Simon? I'll toss an aptitude test around like uh, Chef Boyardee tosses around a salad. My neck's stuck. Is it? Hang on. <laughs> God damn. Did, did you, you see did, that? I I think I heard something. <laughs> I, I went into the Is Chef that? Boyardee anger rant. My, I jammed my neck, guy. Wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Sorry. That's weird. Um, I want to throw something at you. We, we got through the aptitude. We're good. We're, there no, so th that was the where, hardest part. Now you know where... We know... Everyone knows where that, we sit with that you. That sets your... Uh, yeah. Direction. Go ahead. So here's a saying you're never going to hear down at the quadriplegic center. Okay. How would you feel if you had to wear the shoe on the other foot? Mm. How would you feel, Howie Mandel, if the shoe was on the other foot? And you're not going to hear that down at the quadriplegic center. You're going to hear it right here. We also won't hear them to say, in, you know, unless you walk a mile in my shoes, because same, kind of the same. Thing. Right. And here's where I'm going with this. Where are you going with this? You talked about America's Got Talent, but right. the predecessor to that was a different show. It was? Called what? Before America's Got Talent? Deal. Oh, my, in my career, I thought yeah. that, that uh, America's Got Talent came from another show. Right. I was on Deal or No Deal. And you put a lot of people through the ringer. You put a lot of pressure on people, you know, no, to make decisions. They put yeah. it on themselves. But you were the host. All I did was say deal or no deal. And I said, and then I said, pick a case. I had two lines. It lasted four years. I had two lines. There's no game. There's no trivia. There's no, I didn't do, I didn't really. And what would you do if the shoe was on the other foot? Can I make you an offer, Howie Mandel? Go ahead. Howie Mandel, what? let me make you this offer. Okay. And all expenses paid, vacation at a beach resort in Barbados with four overweight girls in leg braces, a crowbar, and a one-day Home Depot flatbed truck rental. Howie Mandel. Veal or no veal?
veal or no veal? Harlan. No veal. <laughs> He's funny. <laughs> See what I mean? How does it feel? You don't realize until you're on this side of it. And this is something you, you'll never hear down at the Heller, Helen Keller uh, foot center. No. How does it feel to have the shoe on the other foot? Can I just make a formal apology to everybody who was ever a contestant? I didn't realize what it was like to be on... I don't know that we need an apology, but I just thought maybe because you were on the other side of it for so long. And, uh, boy. You flipped it. You flipped it. Yeah. Wow. And there might be... I've only been here for like a few minutes, and yet you've you've captured my aptitude. You've offered me veal. You... It's just... It's uncanny. I went in the wrong door. Yeah. And now... I begged for a naked woman and didn't get a naked woman. So much has happened. And it's just about to get even bigger and better. Really? Well, the, we, more things have happened on this pod. I think there is, I've never been on a podcast where so much has happened in such a short amount of time. And we're having fun. We're having a giggle. We're having a ha-ha. But there's a side to Howie that everyone knows. And it's called germophobia. Right. And it's something we've probably talked to death. You've probably had a million interviews where you've talked about it, and you've never, talked I'm, it to death. I've never even mentioned it. How did you know? Like, how are you able to research? Do... Mm-hmm. You're so surprising. But what I want to do, Howie, I have a charity. I don't know if you've heard of my charity. It's called Cinnamon Angels Fly Fly Away. It's a charity that helps children who have cinnamon allergies. They get swollen ankles. They drool. They, you know. But we also do other research. And, uh, you know, I talked to the team at Cinnamon Angels Fly Fly Away. And we talked about the the germophobia. And we thought, we don't want to talk about it with Howie. We want to try and find a cure. Because I know it it haunts you. It plagues you. It's something you deal with in your daily existence. It is. So why talk about it anymore? Let's find a cure. And let me tell you what we've done here. And I think you're going to like this. At our research center at Cinnamon Angels Fly Fly Away, we do other research for other afflictions. Okay. And one of our specialists, our scientists there, Dr. Daniel Esophagus, who actually cured halitosis at the gingivitis clinic in Seattle, Washington, uh, he came up with a device to help us overcome... Your fear of touching. Now, these boxes are sealed. No one's ever touched them. I want to reach in there, and we're going to help you get through not being able to touch another human being, which has got to be painful and lonely. Do you want me to open it? Open it up. And these were developed by this doctor. And uh, never Can been. Can I ask you something? Yes. But before I unveil whatever yes. it is, why is it? What's the stain on the inside? I don't know if you can. Oh. Why that, is it, why is mine stained? That, why is the mm, box? What is that? Yeah. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what that is. But let's not let it get in the way of healing. If I I, I almost feel like you're deflecting and I'm not trying to get a way out. Stain. But reach into your unopened package. And Unhappy, you, let us make it right, it says. You're going to find inside, Howie, a way that we can connect and touch. It's hands. These are our cinnamon angels fly, fly away, happy healing hands. Why is it, why does mine, why is mine, moist? like, why is mine? This is to make them realistic. We kind of make them so they have a sweaty hue on them. And so what we want to do, Howie, is I know you don't like to shake hands. I don't. You don't like to touch. I don't. But for our first, our first session, what we'd like to do is hold hands. Me and you. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm shaking. I'm shaking. You can see it. And what we need to do here is I, I trust you, Harlan. I love you, Harlan. I, um, <clears throat> I trust you, Harlan. I love you, Harlan. 
and separate. <laughs> and now I do it. We hold hands again. Okay. I trust you, Howie. I love you, Howie. <laughs> Thank you, Harla. Yeah. Wow, that's so... I've never... And now the second test... Oh. Well, there's a series of... These are the doctors. They're not mine. The second test now is we step it up and we caress each other's face. I mean, this is just to help you. Right. Let's move the stain box. I lean in or out? Yeah. Okay. I love you, Howie. I love, I love you, Harlan. I trust you, Howie. I, I trust. This one's a hard one. I... Start again. Start again. Okay. I know it's not easy, guy. I love you, Howie. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I trust you, Howie. I. Give me a minute. Wow. This isn't easy. Wow. Give them a minute, folks. Give them a minute. We're going to have a drink. Let them uh, process. Give them some quiet time to think. And this is all part of, um, you know, Dr. Daniel Esophagus, who cured halitosis and gingivitis up at the gingivitis clinic, said this is, you Okay. Are you ready for the next? Well, let's try. I didn't get through that one. Let's try. Okay. Here we go. I'll let you do it alone. I. I love I I love you, Harlan. And I. You I help. trust. I I trust. I trust. I trust. I tr help me. Trust. 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 Sorry. Trust. I, I slipped. Trust. Yes. Whew. Wow. Baby steps. How do you feel? Do you feel a little bit? Okay. Are, are you ready for the second? The Third. next. The Third. next one's a little. They Third. they We've get done. harder. We've done two. We just did the one caress. We did the hand. Oh, this is three. We did the hand holding. You're losing. And yes, because this is intense for me too. I'm not a trained therapist. I'm working off. You may off. not have the aptitude for this. Well, let's not use my own material against me, guy. Um, the third phase of the treatment. <coughs> Excuse you? Was that me? I think it was. Are you okay? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I've never been able to do that before. That's wild. Well, I mean, just yeah. um, through you. It's, oh. not, it's not a, I've never been able to do that. Do you yodel or anything? In Let your me try it. Can I try it again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. Mother Mary and a big fucking plate of mashed up meatloaf. That's amazing. Wow. I feel that's a that's a good that's a good <sighs> Howie Mandel before we do the third test of the helping healing hands I have an offer for you Howie Mandel Three star-filled nights in Paris, France, with Lawrence Fishburne, a basset hound puppy, and a fully preserved corpse brought up from the remains of the Titanic. Howie 
Mandel. Seal or no seal? Howie Mandel. Seal or no seal? Take your time. Think about what this would mean to you and your family. Seal or no seal? No seal! Let's move on. Let's move on to stage three. Yeah. This is intense, bro. I'm sweating. The next test for the health, happy healing hands, and these get tougher. And this is a little more intimate. We have to pick each other's nose. I trust you. I love you. I, I trust. I trust. I try. I can't do it. I can't do it. Holy shit! Whew. Oh my god! <sighs> Howie Mandel. Third offer. Four nights on Broadway, attending all the top shows, VIP access to the dressing rooms of the stars, Tina Turner's wig from the movie Thunderdome, and four hours in a dimly lit room with a butter statue of Barry Manilow slow dancing with Helen Keller. Howie Mandel. Broadway show. Eel or no eel? Eel <laughs> or no eel? Howie Mandel. Eel. Think about your family, what it means. No eel. You play hard, guy. Play hard. I'm tired. I'm tired. This brings us to our last healing hands. And we're making progress. This is going actually better than I thought. This last test is uh, called the popcorn kernel. And have you ever had a popcorn kernel jammed in your gums and had to pick it out? Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the popcorn kernel test. Howie Mandel. I trust you. I trust you too. I, oh, I, I love can, you. I love you too. Oh. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. I trust you. I love you. I got it. I have a tissue. Don't. Can you use your shirt, please? Just rub the drool on your outfit, if you don't it's mind. Not that. It's not drool. Sweat. If you don't. Sweat. 
I'm going to give you a minute just to collect your, and then I want to, I want to do an assessment of what's happened here and get into your head, see how you feel. I'm hot and I'm sweating too, guy. It's not just you. Okay. No one said therapy was easy. How, uh, how are you, guy? I mean, the touching, the phobia, did this do anything? I don't think I'm the same person that I was when I came in. Say that again, please. I don't think I'm the same person now that I was before I came in to do this podcast. Ow! Oh, damn. Thanks. Uh, well, I'm glad we made some progress. I think we're over a lot of humps, and I think we can start the show. Let's play the theme music. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Howie Mandel on the Harland Highway Podcast. Welcome, guy. Good to be here. Great to see you. Yeah. Seem like you're in a good, you know. Space. Yeah. Wow. Can I plug my podcast? Give it a plug, give it a plug. Howie Mandel st- does stuff wherever you get your podcasts, on YouTube, wherever yeah. you get it. I do it with my daughter, Jacqueline Schultz. She's a treasure. She really is. You were great on the show. If you haven't had a chance to see it yet, go to... We had Howie a blast. Mandel. Yeah, HowieMandel.com. It was really good. It was really good. You're real good, real funny. The uh, feedback has been tremendous. Has it? Mm-hmm. You know, it's rare when I lose it. Like, it's rare for me to, like, just, I think a lot of comedians, it's hard for them to just lose it and start laughing. Right, laughter doesn't You got me. On, on your podcast, you got, you got me. I think you got yourself. Well. I think you got, you were laughing at your own. Yeah, your own that's stuff. true. But you did. But I've never seen you get yourself the way you got yourself on my show. I got I mean, you real I know, good. I know you're funny, and I know I've always thought you're funny, but I've never seen see, you think, I've yeah, never yeah, seen yeah, you yeah. think as fun. I never funny like as, to, you were got uh, you got like you, you did, did something and then you realized got, d- d- got, it, got it. it and then you by it right and then we all laughed together oh. and it's just it, it became it, something <sighs> thank you for having me on and, and thank you for having me on well yes. here's the thing i i thought i could have howie on and i'd said it earlier we could have some fun we could have some giggles we could go down the same old interview roads but is that really me helping a friend? Is that me looking for solutions for a friend? Is that me trying to cure a friend of maybe some things that have plagued him or her? If, and uh, so I just thought, you know, let's do a little of this. Let's do a little of that, and, and here we go. So Why do you want a friend? What do you want from a friend? I when want you s- need something? No, no. No, the- when you need something. Okay. Come at me. When you need something, it's good to have a friend. If but you need a helping hand. That's what these are. Helping, healing hands. High five. Boom. <laughs> right there. Right at you. I love these. I love these. Want to play rock, paper, scissors with them? Go ahead. One, two, two three. Paper. Uh, Try one more time. One, one two, two, three. three. <sighs> Fuck, this is hard. One, One, two, two, three. three. Wait. Ready? One, One, two, two, three. three. I think I won. Rock, paper, fuck you. How about that? Yeah, new game. Anyways. You don't need as a host when you have a guest. Sorry, I didn't mean it. it's It's like a prank. And I wanted to ask you about that because you did all your prank shows, the hidden camera shows, which are amazing. They're hilarious. Mm. Was there ever one that went south that, that a, a prank that you did with the hidden camera where it just like it caused someone to have a freaking heart attack or Not they got heart mad attack, or a lot of people, you know, if you saw it, it went well. Yeah. If you didn't see it, 
it probably didn't go well because ultimately they have the say. They have to sign a release yeah, for it that's to be on true. TV. So, yes, there were a couple that didn't go well. One was a couple. I was, um, one was mo- but mostly with animals. That oh. Well, for the animals. Nothing bad happened to animals. Well, but th- where I live in the valley here, yeah. um, there is a, a big pet cemetery. And I went to the Whoa. pet cemetery uh, with my lovely little dog, and they have a they have the the main building has a crematorium, and uh, that's I, better than creamed cat and creamed dog. And I went to the lady and I asked, like, I got prices for cremation and a burial site, yeah, and an urn, and they were very, very, very helpful. And they go, and when are you going to bring the dog in? And I was carrying a dog, yeah, and I said, no, no, he's here. This is the dog. <laughs> Okay, and, yeah. and and they said, "Well, he, he's he seems fine." I go to you; he seems fine. What they go? Well, is he sick? And I go, "No." They go, "Well, why would you do that?" And I go, "He shit in the living room." <laughs> okay, you know, and yeah. So I'm going to leave him here with you. So she t- she takes the dog away from me and goes in the back, and she called the police. <laughs> so that didn't that didn't yeah. air. Yeah. Then there was one where I got in trouble. I will not. It is at a um, a very public place, a zoo. I won't say what zoo it okay. was. Okay. And but they were they the zoo. I had I was doing something for a television show. Yeah. For a network, and we had permission to be at the zoo. Yeah. And I was wearing like a zookeeper outfit. Yeah. And uh, I went up to a gentleman and. I said, you know, we're doing this volunteer program. Are you interested in volunteering? And he said, I would love to. I would love to volunteer. At what the zoo. At the zoo. Yeah. And he said, what is the, uh, what is his duty? And I said, what we're going to do is we want to make the zoo a little more interactive. So there was a cage of llamas. And they, so I said. I love well, llamas, by the way. Me too, actually. And alpacas. So, so there was a cage of, and I said, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, llamas and alpacas, we want to make them more interactive. So we're going to move them outside the pen and so they can interact with the people at the zoo. He goes, well, how, how do you do that? I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the uh, alpaca and llama pen. Wow. I'm going to. Here we lift, go. I'm going to lift out the alpaca or the llama. I'm going to yeah. hand it to you and I need you to place it by that tree over there. And he says, well, how do you, I don't think I can carry a, an alpaca or a yeah. llama. And I said, do you know anything about llamas? Yeah. And he goes, well, no. I go, you do realize that uh, their skeletons are paper thin and the whole inside the mass of their body is mostly air. A full grown llama maybe weighs six, seven pounds. He's okay. going, are you kidding me? Yeah. And I go, no, no. So I'm going to pass it out to you. And I thought the interaction would be the fun. Yeah. So, and I start walking toward, not knowing exactly where to go, and I start walking toward the pen, and he goes, well, you know what? You know where you want to put it, so I'll, I'll hand it to you. And I go, no, that's not necessary. He goes, no, it's not necessary. I want to do it. I want to do it. I'm, yeah. This is exciting. And I said, no, sir. And he kind of just ran ahead of me and I go no 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 and he's climbing the fence and then I'm going no no and I take off my hidden camera I go it's a gla- it's a joke it's a joke it's a prank he goes don't worry I'll do it and he jumps in he's not listening oh, and now he's yeah. in, in the middle of the zoo he's in the llama pen and the, the llamas and I and I'm yelling help I don't want to go into the oh, thing that the people yeah. drop the cameras yeah. and everything and this guy gets pinned all the llamas and alpacas start wow. pinning and they pin him against the wall and and they're spitting. Yeah, they love they're, to spit, they're right? They're spitting all yeah. over him. And he's going, please help me. And he's, <laughs> and he's trying. To, I see him. He puts his hands like under the front things of a llama. And he's trying to lift. And they're not 10 pounds. Wow. And he's yelling help. And I'm yelling help. And then <laughs> the real zoo people had to come in. Families are running. And wow. they asked me to leave. And that never aired. Do you know who you should have called to help him? No. The Dalai Lama. You're right. Hang on. Do you want to slap me for that one? No, but I'll suck your tongue. <laughs> you re- these really have worked. You're really getting over your your germ phobe. That's the no, first that, time. That was a, I'm not gonna. That was oh. just a reference to what he did to the child. Oh, yeah. He I, said it was a joke. No, you don't joke about tongue sucking an infant. In Tibet, you do. Oh, you do. Yeah, it's like in oh, okay. America. We'd go in America. We go. 
got your nose. Yeah. In Tibet, they go, right. suck my tongue. Right. Yeah. Pull my finger, you fart with a kid, suck the saliva off Tibetan, a kid's tongue. Sure. T- what Tibet, a riot. It's suck my tongue. Yeah. <laughs> He's what a, a nut. What a laugh. Uncle Dolly. What a nutty Uncle Uncle, Do- Uncle Lama. Uncle Dolly. Larry what? Lama. <laughs> Is his real name Larry? I think it is Larry. It should be, yeah. Dolly is what he does for a living. He's a dolly, like like. Office. That's his job. He's a, his is job. It, he's a dolly. He's a dolly. Last name is Lama. His real first name is Larry. Wow. Larry Lama. I wonder if you loaded like a piece of furniture on him, and pushed him up a hill. That would he'd be a really good dolly. you like to slap me now with the hand? Should I do it to myself? Ah, oh, God, damn. I didn't have to hit myself so hard. Well. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it shouldn't let me hit myself, guy. Maybe we could have avoided this. Oh, so much fucking pressure. <sighs> Make sure I got it. Oh, wait, I dropped the other one. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I think it's. Here we go. All right. Let me read it. Howie Mendel. We have one more deal for you. One more offer. Are you ready? No. Offer number four. You open your own Burger King franchise, throw an 87-year-old lady off of Mount Rushmore, you spend four hours in a root cellar playing with Cindy Crawford's mole. Howie Mandel. Peel or no peel? Think about what this could mean to your friends, your family. Are you married? Your wife? Peel or no peel? Howie Mandel. Peel or no peel? I said it about three minutes ago. Three minutes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Howie Mandel. Peel or no peel? No peel. <laughs> I just, I feel like I can make it all the way to the end of this. It's, well, do you see how hard what you did to people, what you did to America? And not that it's a bad thing. I'm, I just... What you did was good. You gave people money. You gave them competition. But what you didn't understand is the pressure. I, I wanted you to step onto the other side of what you put people through. And I hope uh, in a way that that's healing. You know, on today's podcast, is it over? Is today's over? Um, this one? Yeah. Let me check. No, but I, I just want to. No. Okay. Okay. Then I'll. I'll I'm just saying that this has been an incredibly um, educational, moving, changing experience for me. And I've, I've never really had something like that. I mean, you wouldn't think the, you know, Harlan Williams podcast would be the place where somebody would come and heal up. Yeah, I just think that your life is going to change after people see this. I think you're going to be inundated. Hang on, I think there's something fell on the floor. A lot of things have fallen on the floor. I've been watching you collect. It's okay. I like how... It's 
This no. is kind of a one man operation, isn't it? Like if something drops, yeah. you just go look for it. <laughs> you gotta look for it. No, I like that. I like that because you don't. You do it. You do it. You do it. You don't have. You don't have people do it. I don't have peeps. I do it. Let me look on the floor. Can I be honest with you? Sure. You smell Ryan Gosling. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you sit with that for a second. Hold on. Something else fell? Something on the floor. Fell on the floor. You have the biggest desk, the most shelves of any podcast, and you haven't been able to keep one fucking thing on a shelf or a desk or within reach of yourself. You know what you need? What? A helping hand. <laughs> That's what you... <laughs> this is a... Are you fixing something? Are you getting something? Are you... I lost something, but it's okay. You want me to... Should we... <sighs> well, how do you do these things? This is like I know. A, it's... There's not I, a lot going on. I dropped something. But I'm okay. <laughs> All right. Are you okay? I think I am. Um, now let's start the podcast. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Howie Mendel, uh, welcome to the Harland Highway podcast. God, I, I love your smile. Thank you. You have one of those smiles that illuminates a room. Thank do you, you. Do you know that about yourself? I do. Sometimes yeah. when it, uh, you know what? what? Sometimes when somebody drops something and they don't know where it is. They'll have me smile so that they can find it. Oh, God. So, okay, well, if you want to smile, let, I'll, I'll turn the flashlight on my phone and see if I can find it. You see there? Is what? it there? Hang on. Look. There? <laughs> you find the thing you lost? Wait. There? Oh. Yeah, this side? Get it? Yes. See, it's my smile. Your smile did it. Thank you. <laughs> I found it, Howie. Thank you for your smile. But your your smile really does light up a room. I know. You know? Do you know that for real? Oh yeah, yeah. Is that a, is that something you've used to your advantage over the years? Yeah. The two things I've noticed is Tell sometimes me. my uh, smile will light up a room and my yeah. socks will smell up a room. And oh. uh, if the combination of yeah. both is just party time. Wow. But have you used it as as a as a as a tool in your long successful career? Did you know you, what bothers me now? Why? I just been fidgeting with this and it's been in your nose and in your mouth. Do you have any Purell or antibacterial uh I just oh I didn't God. expect it. That's it. That's, so you don't have any That's right. You should you should have been touching this one. Amber! Hang on, I do have some. Will you stay here and smile for about 45 seconds? I will. Hang on. Somebody Smi help Do your me. smile. Okay. Hang on. I'm Thank you. Get, get you some Purell. Thank you. Thank you. It's lighting. I just, I'm smiling on the outside, but on the inside, I'm going a little crazy because... I, I didn't, I never meant to touch the hand that touched his mouth and touched his nose. These were all hermetically sealed hands and but now they've been in his nose and his mouth and i touched it and i'm freaking out <laughs> i'm really freaking out because this is you know these are hermetically sealed but now it's yeah. been in your nose and your mouth i need purell just you open it i, I don't even want to touch the. Wow. i don't want to touch anything this is, this is sort of like an emergency it kind of is you want all oh, of it uh, kind of no 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 oh wow oh shit wow Whew. that was a real <laughs> i think we got to do this twice like another douse oh okay just because right. we did that, now this hand. Okay, thank you. It's good alcohol and oh, oh it's good. God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Woo! That was really like that was intense. It got intense. It did. It did. It did. Are you it okay? Did. I know. Y yes. In yes. a way, we sort of did <laughs> tackle it. In a way, in, the end. in a way, without me knowing, yeah, without even the way you were able to slip that in, like you got me to stick uh, something in your nose and your mouth 
leave it in front of me so that I would inadvertently touch it, yeah. freak out, and then realize I'm okay. So after this podcast, I'm going to have to, I'll go directly to my, I wasn't going to go to my therapist, but now I will. You don't need to. No, I need to. No, would you like to take one of these? No, no, not going to touch anything anymore. Well, my hand says different. No, I'm not touching anything anymore. Would you like me to move? No, yeah, take, move that, it away? take it away. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my hat. <laughs> okay. I'm doing the best I can, guy. These hands don't have feelings. But I do. Um, you're wow. gonna be okay. But you I'll said you said at the beginning of the podcast. What remember, did I say? you you I don't know said which, which beginning, which one, the sixteenth one. Yeah. You said I have a way of doing things where you don't really know they're coming. Remember at the at the very top of the podcast, you kind of said the way I do things is you don't even know that I've healed or touched or mended. <laughs> Take that back. Yeah. I just take that back. That's all. <laughs> I'm good. I'm all good. Everything's good. No, I really am. I'm good. Do I think. Wanna, can I plug my podcast? Yeah. Uh, it's called Howie Mandel Does Stuff, and I do it with my daughter, Jacqueline Schultz, wherever you get your. He was great on it. Let's get going here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Harland Highway Podcast. Howie Mandel is here today. And uh, I got to say, you're looking, as we kick things off, or you're looking bright. You're looking, have you been doing some kind of uh, germ-phobe therapy or something? My life is a germ-phobe therapy. Okay, but... Germophobia for me, to, to be totally honest okay, with you, is, just, do a, it. is a, um, just one, like I actually just, I have OCD, and sometimes my germophobia doesn't rear its ugly head. And I'm Good. really medicated as I sit here with you today. And uh, I have moved my therapist into a whole new tax bracket. But it's, uh, you know, it's always a fight, always. So I'm always looking for new and wonderful ways to deal with. Hello. Um, hello. But I want to tell you something because I've never told you this. Okay. I'm not a full-on germaphobe. But I'm a little bit of a germ guy because like 20 years ago, I used to do all the stand-up clubs and I do the meet and greets. And then after every show, you'd get out and you'd shake over the course of a weekend like a thousand different hands. Mm -hmm. And I'd find every year I'd get the flu like three times a year. Right. And it was killing me. And I'm going, what, what is it? And they say that most flu viruses and colds and germs are transmitted through the handshake. You, you shake a hand, and then you touch your nose, mouth, or ear, or, or whatever these areas Keep are. Keep your hands away from wherever you're showing them right now. Yes. Yeah. And so I decided from that moment on, I would just do the fist pump, and I, I rarely ever get sick anymore. The fist pump is something totally different. Oh, yeah, it's this fist, is the fist pump. The fist pump. Well, okay. It, Wait. The fist pump for me was when, before I was married, is uh, alone in my room. Would you like to show? No. Am I in the wheelhouse? Mm hmm Am I close? I don't know why I feel like such a dick right now. Whoa! Okay. Um, but here's what I proposed, Howie. This was years ago, pre-COVID, pre-everything. I was like, the government spends all this money doing, like, commercials, um, you know, Get the flu shot, get the flu shot, get the flu shot. But if they put all that money into telling people to stop shaking hands, I think that would be 90% more effective than if they put all the resources into the other stuff. And that is why I'm here today. <sighs> then we better get going. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, here to talk about really important stuff. Uh, Howie Mandel on the Harland Highway Podcast. Do you have a podcast? Yeah, I do. Can I plug it? Sure, I'd love that. Um, I do Howie Mandel Does Stuff wherever you get your uh, your podcast and okay. on YouTube with my daughter, Jacqueline Schultz. She's it, great. It what a gem. Drops every Tuesday. You were on it. Yeah. Great. What a blast. You were great. 
Um, I was wondering, I, normally I've never done this with, the, with another guest, but there's a final test with the helping healing hands. You don't have to touch them, fortunately. Okay, I'll do it. Done. But, but you have a lot of celebrity friends. I do. And this is all about intimacy and getting close and okay. getting over the phobia and fear. Now, mm -hmm. this one takes a little bit of setting up, but I'm going to throw a celebrity friend at you, Barry Manilow. Okay. You know Barry? I do. You've met Barry? I have. So what Barry, to help you get over your phobia, this is Vaseline. Oh, we, go ahead. Well, this is to help you heal. What we do is we get a dab of Vaseline on the finger like thus, or whatever they say in Shakespeare. And then your friend, tell us your connection to Barry Manilow because he was so eager to jump in and try and help. Have you met him? Have I did. You... I have met him. Um, he's actually a friend of a friend. I've, I've been to uh, Barry Manilow concerts. Great. And um, he writes the songs. Yeah, that make the whole world sing. Well, Barry wanted to get in on your healing. We yeah. talked at length how important this was, and this is the final step of the process. And Barry Mantle, from the love of his heart, uh, he sent in one of his dingleberries. Uh, God bless him. He pulled a ripe dingleberry right out of his crotch, right, right down in the scrotal area. Well, <laughs> Can I be honest with you? Yeah. It's not one of Barry's. What? Who do, who do you think it is? I don't know. That's not Barry's. <laughs> well, it, he sent it in a hermetically sealed FedEx envelope and said it was his. Whether this is John Bon Jovi's, whether this is Carol Burnett's, this is a dingleberry guy. Oh, it is a dingleberry. And oh. we're going to put it right on the tip of the magic healing hands. And uh, the final thing is you sniff it. And we see if you're cured. Howie, I need you to sniff the dingle, Barry Manilow's dingleberry. That's not Barry Manilow's. Well, it, yes, it is. It isn't. Look, you came on this podcast. Are you going to sniff Barry Manilow's dingleberry or not? That's not Barry Manilow's dingleberry. But it is a dingleberry. It is a dingleberry. Will you sniff the dingleberry? I will not sniff a dingleberry of somebody who is totally unidentified. And you are fucking lying. That is not Barry Manilow's dingleberry. I don't know who's Oh, I'm lying? You, okay, you hold fucking, on. You're hold, fucking lying. Hold on, wise guy. That's fucking Manilow's. No. Prove me wrong. No, I will not. I will not. I, I refuse. <laughs> no one gives an after. <laughs> no one gives an after. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you, buddy. the Harland Highway, <laughs> Howie Mandel, check out, do you have a podcast? Plug it real quick. I don't have one. Okay. <laughs> this was a deal, not a no deal. I love you, Howie. I Thank you, me. buddy. Oh my God. Until next time, chicken chow mein, and watch out for dingleberries. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>